Hey, what's going on everybody? John here with Wiki Game Guides, and I have something incredibly unique for you today. This is me playing Dragon Age Inquisition. Uh, I got flown out to LA by EA, very generous on their part, to uh, record a couple preview videos for this game. Um, and I really enjoyed my time with it, so on this Let's Play Part 1, I'm going to be showing you and telling you what my experience was like with playing Dragon Age Inquisition. Um, so this is kind of the character select party selection screen, rather, where it, you can change which uh, compatriots you have running around the world with you. This is the very first mission of the Emerald Graves area, the Viridium Mine. So I'm going to show you finding the first camp, talk a little bit about a little bit about the systems involved here, and uh, you know some some gameplay of actually killing some stuff. Uh, if you are still here, please give the video a like. It helps share this video with other people. Um, so right now I'm playing as a dual wielding rogue, which is a very stealth and poison and trap oriented class. Uh, there's also another subspec of the rogue class called the archer, which is what the uh, the Gimli character is essentially. And you can respec in like if you choose the rogue class, you're not stuck as being a rogue. Right now my character is level 12, so I started pretty far into the game. So this isn't the first area of the of the game by any means. But um, they, they put us at a point in the game where we have a lot of skills unlocked, we have some pretty good weapons, and we got our uh, we, we have the full team with us. So we can quickly switch between all three of the classes at any time and, try, and use all of their abilities and really get to see the full range of effects and uh, skills that everybody has in the game. So the nice thing is you can see we got the four characters on the left, and basically whatever class you choose, you're going to be doubling up on one of the classes. You have a rogue, you have a warrior, and you have a mage. And um, the bald-headed guy, he's the mage. Uh, the chick she that I'm playing as right now, she's the warrior. And uh, Varric, uh, Gimli, is uh, an archer. A rogue and so it it makes it like I think that's my favorite thing that the thing that jumped out to me the most about like when I first started playing this game is that it there's gonna be no lack of uh, variety in gameplay in this in in the skills that you get to use because you always have instant access to all of these classes or at least after you've built your full team you will have access to all of these classes you you're you're, you're never going to get stuck just like choosing, oh, I want my character, uh, the Inquisitor, uh, the main character, the guy who survives this massive blast and is the only one who somehow survived this thing. Um, if you say, oh, I want him to be a mage, well, that doesn't mean you're stuck playing a mage for however many dozens of hours you're going to be playing this game. It just means that, well, that's what his class is, but you get to uh, yourself spend the skill points on all these other uh, characters that are following you around as well as level up your own guy so that that jumped out to me quickly is something that's going to make the com or it's going to keep the combat fresh through the entire game uh, so we just liberated the first uh, fast travel point in the first camp of the mission of the uh, of this first area the emerald graves um, this area these camps are it's strange that they have the fast travel totem right there because you can fast travel at any time as long as you're not in combat just by hitting start and bringing up the world map. Uh, and these camps are very important because the, uh, when you fast travel or if you walk to a camp and click on one of the tents to rest, that's how you heal your entire team and refill your potions. Your team doesn't slowly regenerate health over time the way that so many other RPGs or shooters or something like that do. Uh, they, when you get hurt in combat, they're hurt and you have to heal them. And I didn't dig deep enough into the uh, the mage class to see, cause like by default he didn't have any of the healing properties unlocked and some of the stuff was shut off to us cause we just didn't level up enough throughout this game to really tell whether or not they can, uh, uh, they can, you know, well, anyway, I think the only way to heal your guy is through potions, and you only get so many of them after you go to a camp, so it's really tough sometimes, you know, like, when you leave the camp and you're going on a long quest that could take you a long time, you're, you're, those eight potions that I have right now are incredibly important. Uh, so what I'm doing right now is I am uh, climbing up a couple ladders to, uh, to find a landmark, essentially. There's a lot of very Assassin's Creed style elements in this game, and uh, 
finding these landmarks is one of the ones that really stood out to me. Now, they're not, it's, it's not really this, always the same thing <laughs> where you're climbing to the top of a, a large tower and then uh, jumping off into a bale of hay. In fact, I'm just gonna jump off and get kind of hurt on that fall right there. Um, yeah, as you can see right there, I only have two health potions left because I didn't actually heal at that camp. Um, but yeah, there's 20, I think there's 22 landmarks on this first Emerald Graves map. And uh, they, they were all guarded by something, whether it's a small pack enemies or a giant or a dragon or something like that. So I managed to find them all, but I couldn't kill all the enemies that were guarding the landmarks. So uh, getting the landmarks is more than just walking to one place on the map and just clicking A. Uh, it's, you know, getting through the enemies that are protecting it. Uh, so the rogue right here, the way, the way I decided to play this rogue was by focusing on staying out of combat as much as possible, out of toe-to-toe -to -toe combat as much as possible. I would, I would cloak, I would wait for my stamina meter, which is that uh, circle in the bottom right surrounding my skills. Uh, so using skills burns stamina, and uh, there's also a cooldown on a lot of the skills as well. Um, you also have a basic, uh, all, all the classes have just a basic right trigger attack, whether that's just swinging the sword or firing a very basic bow and arrow or uh, using the staff to throw out a little bit of fire damage. Um, but with this rogue right here, uh, and I, I have a separate video if you want to sit, uh, check that out, breaking down how all the different classes work. Um, and... I decided with this guy to not really use uh, the toe-to-toe -to -toe attacks because I wanted him to be a guy who's kind of stealthy and jump into combat, do his like special power attacks, and then jump out really quickly and be in a position to revive his teammates if need be. Because having that stealth ability to revive your teammates is incredibly helpful, especially if you're fighting like a large group of tough enemies, being able to sneak behind their enemy lines like I'm doing right now and uh, do a lot of damage to an archer or uh, revive a teammate or something like that just was in incredibly helpful. So I'm kind of like, I guess this guy is kind of a stealth poisoning, trappling medic in a way. Like even though he doesn't have specific abilities, the mage does have some revive abilities that I managed to, uh, that I noticed on the, on the skill tree, but I don't know if he had healing. It'd be weird if he could revive but couldn't heal, right? There's gotta be a healing thing. Maybe I'll, I'm gonna dig through my recorded vi uh, video a little bit more later. That's what I can find. Anyway. Um, yeah, so this... Uh, now, you you also notice I had, like... I did that kind of chain grapple attack three or four times in a row there. That no, That's because one of the skills that this guy had unlocked uh, was... Or he, he had that kind of gap closing ability where you just throw a chain, jump at him, and kind of do a little bit of kicking damage, I think it was. I don't know. Uh, to the enemy. But uh, there is... On the skill tree... Uh, there are like bonus attributes you can unlock for uh, a lot of the different abilities. And, and that one was, uh, or the, the second skill point you can put into that kind of chain grapple attack was zero cooldown and zero stamina consumed for that ability. So you can just spam that at will if there's only one enemy left and you don't want to be, you know, just waiting patiently for your stamina to regenerate. And, and you don't want to use the basic RT attack. So you saw there, I switched quickly to the mage. Uh, I'm throwing down some large AOE attacks. Uh, I'm using uh, Varak right now uh, and some of his large uh, crossbow barrages, explosive barrages. Now, I think I think the archer and like the, the two ranged classes, I think, were the ones that I had the most fun with. Uh, the, the mage and the archer are the two ranged ones. I got one more captain before we go on to the final little uh, cave area to rescue the, the captured uh, peasants. I don't remember what they were. So, um, Dragon Age Inquisition, the bad, the bad, the bad. What was bad? Um, controls felt a little sluggish initially. Uh, there's no sprint, which took a little bit of getting used to. Uh, the difficulty... Mm, it scaled up very quickly if you weren't well matched for level with the enemies. Uh, the dragon, which I have a separate video for, 
was incredibly difficult. Um, and I don't know if it's always going to be incredibly difficult and I just needed to level up a lot more or what, but there, I, I basically stood zero chance against the dragon. Uh, the giants, on the other hand, were very difficult, but I did manage to kill a couple of them. Um, and that was, uh, that was incredibly satisfying, you know, and with, with the very large enemies, they, you can, so you, like right now I'm like targeting like one enemy at a time and I'm switching between one enemy to the next, but with the very large enemies like dragons and giants, you can target specific points on those enemies. So if you do a whole lot of damage to the left leg of the giant, um, as opposed to like switching between multiple parts on the giant, you will, uh, you'll actually make the giant kind of like go down to one knee and just completely collapse in the middle of the fight and making it easy to do a ton of damage while he's kind of and not worried about getting killed or one shot when he like picks up a giant boulder and just throws it at him. Uh, also, we did not get to play any of the co-op stuff, which was kind of disappointing. And we didn't get to see any of the kind of the overarching... Uh, what do they call their their power system? So completing these quests, you earn power, and you get to spend that power on uh, on things like uh, more soldiers in the area to help uh, gather resources or protect you know the the dark. What's the overall enemy called? It's not the darkness, but the rift. That's what it was. Uh, to protect or to prevent the rift from spreading things like that so it seems like similar to assassin's creed there's going to be uh kind of an overall uh general map risk strategy game style uh, mini game going on and we didn't get to see that either and unfortunately i didn't get to check out the character creation or the crafting systems either which is why you can see i'm skipping a lot of the random loot that's just strewn around the environment so the big question is that i'm sure a lot of people are going to have i like skyrim will i like dragon age inquisition uh, absolutely i absolutely think you will uh even if you didn't like origins 2 this game really has nothing in common with it none of the same repetitive cave combat areas um but i think the combat in this is quite a bit better than skyrim quite a bit faster and more fun which has always been the case for dragon age games um and i think that this game is just has such an expansive story and such an expansive world that if you're looking for a large next gen rpg this may be the exact game you're looking for Thanks for checking out this first uh, Dragon Age Inquisition video that I've been able to post. Uh, if you're looking for more Dragon Age stuff, you can check out my classes breakdown video, uh, some gameplay of fighting dragons and giants and bears, uh, a video breaking down the overworld map and uh, the, the smaller map for this local area, and also some open world gameplay. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe for more Dragon Age Inquisition updates. Thanks for watching. Game on.